Oops, yeah, this is a little bit late. Um, hi, as usual. <laughs> Heidi, hi everyone. My name is Colette Matriga. Welcome to Colette Thermi Kitchen. I am a Thermomix consultant, a very passionate Thermomix consultant, and I believe every home needs Thermomix. So if you're thinking of getting one, no matter where you are in Australia, I would love to support you and look after you once you've got your Thermomix. Um, they're very magical. Absolutely, and I'm sure many of you watching actually have them already, and you love them. Now today, Christmas around the corner, we're going to be making a lovely Christmas treat, and it's known as um, chocolate salami. It is a cookie dough recipe, so if you've got cookie dough, it means it's fully guided, you can even get the kids to make it, it's super easy. And the story behind this, a couple of nights ago, I showed everyone how to make a beautiful pavlova in the Thermomix. And one of my lovely customers mentioned chocolate salami, which intrigued Andrew. And after seeing the picture, Andrew? I thought she was messing with my head. <laughs> He's been saying, can you make me chocolate salami? Can you make me chocolate salami? So we're going to be making this All today. right, it says here, it says, salami de chocolado. Yeah, it sounds pretty Spanish, doesn't it? Or Italian. Italian, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So it is, it's a beautiful thing to put on your Christmas makes. And the great thing is, is that you can make it now and freeze it. So it's one less thing for you to make as we get towards that really crazy busy season. And it freezes well for up to about three months. So that's a real bonus. And it will be so beautiful in a um, hamper as well. So let's get started. Fully guided cookie dough. So it's going to be so easy. Um, start cooking and um, let's just go back and just show everybody so this is I love the screen on the TM6 it's so big it's actually like reading a cookbook and you can actually just press the down arrow to get all the information and you can see this is only going to take us 10 minutes to make and then we need to let it cool down and um, the portion size you've got full instructions um, and you've got full nutrition. So if you're on a low carb diet, this is really not a good option. Um, but you've got your proteins and everything else um, that you can actually count if you want to. And I always recommend you read the tips and hints because there's so much useful information in them. So all we need to do to make this with the fully guided um, TM6 is to press start cooking. And you'll notice the very first thing that's popped up are the measuring scales. And it's telling us to add in 200 grams of milk arrowroot cookies. So just ordinary plain cookies. You can use whatever cookies in this that you have in the pantry. Um, but to give it that kind of salami look, you want a lightish cookie. So things like amaretto cookies would be absolutely lovely and impart a beautiful flavour. Whereas like a chocolate chip cookie might not be as good. Actually, that could be quite good as long as it's not too dark. So it's telling me to pop 200 grams into the Thermomix bowl and we're going to hit next. So it's telling me now to put the lid on. Super easy, all fully guided. So I've done that. What's next Thermomix? And here everything is populated for us on this beautiful big screen. And it's telling us it's going to go for 13 seconds. It's not heating it up, so it's not cooking. Um, and it wants us to actually go around to speed number four. I wonder how many packets of biscuits they used to calculate that 15 seconds was the optimum speed at speed oh. four. Well, you know, that's a good point. All the cookie do recipes, unlike lots of other recipes that you see, like on the recipe community, etc., they're all triple tested. So somebody would have been actually calculating that. What we've actually done is we've chopped up the cookies or the biscuits. Um, so we're not getting them into breadcrumbs. We can certainly do that if we wanted to do like a cheesecake base. But we want chunky bits and fine bits. So that's what we have, and that's perfectly fine for our salami. Yeah, so, we'll them, <laughs> so now we're going to hit next, and it's just told me to transfer these back into a bowl. So doing that, and you can see there's a little bit of a cookie there caught on the blade. We don't want to put our hands in there. Remember, those blades are Solinger steel, the best in the world. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fiddle. What type of steel? Knot. Solinger. Solinger. Solid, you know, the, with the 
Find this swordsmith in the world. There is nothing nasty and cheap about the Thermomix. It is really good, good quality. Well, it's German. There's nothing nasty, nasty well, and cheap about Germans. No, exactly. Um, I just get my car. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should stop there, Andrew. <laughs> we have some lovely German friends. My father's German. Your father's German? <laughs> yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Okay, so now it's telling this to add in 100 grams of dried fruit and nuts. So it's just a mixture. Um, I've added in just a little bit more. And um, I've got some beautiful raisins, pistachios, because they're going to add a lovely bit of colour and crunch. And I thought because it's Christmas, I've got cranberries. So that's the three that I've used. But seriously, use whatever you love. And if you do like a little bit of a boozy treat, why not soak your raisins um, in rum or something like that for a little bit um, for an hour or so beforehand, which would be nice. All right, so that's gone in there. So you can see I've got a little bit more. Um, lid's going to go on. And I'm going to go next. And again, it's going to chop those for us. So I just need to turn the blade round to speed five for five minutes. Okay. So isn't it lovely how clean my kitchen is? Imagine if you were doing this without a Thermomix. You know, you'd get the rolling pin out, maybe crack your cookies in a in a bag, you'd have your your uh, chopping board out, your knife, you'd probably have some nuts and fruit on the floor. <laughs> um, and I, look, I just love, that's one of the things that blew me away when I went to a Thermomix demo, how clean it is to cook with a Thermomix. So there you go, let's just chop those down a little bit, which is awesome. That's so all the same bowl still? Sorry? All the same bowl? Yeah, haven't had to change the bowl at all, so we're going to go next. Um, transfer it into bowl, which I have done. So now we're going to add in 80 grams of raw sugar. So, <clears throat> in my pantry, I have one main kind of sugar, raw sugar. From this one raw sugar, which is probably the cheapest sugar to buy, you can make caster sugar, icing sugar, brown sugar, and the list goes on. So, think of about the money that you would save with just one little pantry staple sugar. So you've got a nice big jug of sugar there and you can actually make whatever you need as you need it. So this raw sugar, 80 grams, you can absolutely use less if you want to. That's gone into the Thermomix and I'm gonna hit next. Lids going on, measuring cups going on, it's telling me to do that. And off we go next. And again, it's all programmed for us, super simple. All I need to do is to turn that dial all the way round to speed 10. Oh. You didn't put the paper towel yeah, in Yeah, I didn't pack, I always forget. Um, if you don't want a little bit of sugar dust coming out, you can just put a little piece of paper towel under there and that will look after that. So now basically from that raw sugar, do you remember I say I could make icing sugar? There we go. Oh, yeah. Icing sugar. Beautiful. Save money from having to buy icing sugar. Right, so done that. Now it wants me to transfer it into a little bowl as well. So let's see if I can do that without making too much mess. Excellent. So the next thing it's asking us to do is to add into the bowl 100 grams of dark chocolate. I'm so still using the same bowl. Still using the same bowl. So dark chocolate, use whatever your favourite chocolate is. Um, this one is a little bit bloomed, but it's still perfectly fine to actually use. This is um, some Couverture chocolate. I love using that kind of chocolate. But whatever chocolate you love to eat, um, that's the kind of chocolate you should use. You could use cooking chocolate if you wanted to. What's, what's the brand of that chocolate? Because that is excellent. Yeah, that's um, Calibut, Calibut chocolate, which is What my percentage favorite. proof? That one's a 55% of cocoa solids in that one. So it's kind of a, a semi-sweet chocolate. So it's not really bitter, but you can certainly get the Calibut in all the different levels from, from milk chocolate, which I've got, right through to the different as a darknesses. So chocolate's gone in, lid goes back on. And heading next, and again, it's all programmed for us, so all I need to do now is to turn around to speed number seven. And 
what it's done is chop down that chocolate. So imagine all the things I'd have had to be doing in my kitchen if I didn't have the Thermomix. So it's telling me now just to scrape down, but I don't need to do it, it's pretty clean. So that chocolate is now chopped. And what that means is, it's gonna melt much more easily. So the next thing is scrape it down, and that would just mean getting your spatula scraping down the sides, but it's pretty clean. Um, lid goes back on again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually melt that chocolate for three minutes at 50 degrees. So now the temperature comes into play. Um, and that's going to be melted through. I love, I love this name, Vita Fa Shifo. Oh, that's a lovely name. name. She calls your sugar dust fairy dust. <laughs> love sweet fairy dust from Vita Fa Shifo. That's lovely. I hope I pronounced that right because it's such a wonderful name. What language or what country do you think that's from? Vita Fa Shifo. Dubai? Know. Vita Fa Shifo. Don't oh, know. Hey, where would you get your where would you get your cake tins from? Some eagle eyed cake tins. Um, Oh, I love my cake tins. Jimmy says, where did you get take cake tins from? Um, those were from the Kitchen Warehouse. So they have an online store as well. And what I like about those cake tins, and like a lot of them, they're quite deep. And I digress, but I'll show you. Um, they're so practical. You would think they're upside down, but they're not. I love this design. What it means is that you can actually put your cake on here to serve and you can cut from that and then when you finish you just put that on top. So it makes a lot of sense to have your cake tin like that. Whereas most of them you buy are like that. And it comes in a set of three which is lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I, have, I have a few sets because I love them and I'm always baking. <laughs> so Leanne says she got a new Thermomix this week. Yay! Well done. Awesome. Is that from you, Colette? For I'm you? not sure. Leanne Marsh? Yes. Uh, yes. I think so. <laughs> I got, I, I've, it be, I've been a bit, I've not been 100% the last few weeks, but um, I... I've Leanne says yes, it was. Thank you, Leanne. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, see what, see what I have to put up with. <laughs> I just have, which has been absolutely amazing. I've had so many customers in the last uh, month or so. Um, and oh, we've had so much fun. Last night, my new customers, um, we got together, um, or quite a few of them, we got together and did a steaming class. And we were learning all sorts of things about steaming, how you steam in the thermomix, it's a whole chicken, a bowl of blade, beef, you know, all sorts of things like that. And all the the basics behind it. So at the end of that, they're all really keen to get on and, and do steaming for all sorts of different things. Um, and we always take it a little bit further, which is um, what I think a lot of people like. So I was talking to them about, you know, cooking chicken. And we all know that the internal temperature, well, maybe you don't, but the internal temperature of cooked chicken, 74 degrees. But you don't want to then pull it out at 74 degrees because what happens, it continues to cook. So by the time you um, actually plate it up, you've probably got overcooked chicken. So you need to pull it before it gets to that 74 degrees. So all sorts of those things, so lots of Thermomix things. And I, I honestly do believe that my customers are so well informed about the Thermomix and that's why they get such joy from it. And that's obviously why lots of them refer people to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, if you want a Thermomix, I can help you out and look after you. <laughs> Tracy, you put price down. I don't know what that means. There's no question mark under it. Is there? Over the tins, I think I think they're about fifty dollars, something like that. Um, so for a set, or for each. Yeah, for a set. For a set. For a set. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so chocolate beautifully melted, you know. And you know, if you're doing that without a thermomix, you'd have to do it over a bain marie. So you'd have boiling water underneath. So you can imagine the mess our kitchen would be. Making this simple little Christmas. Look at that, you've, got, you've broken biscuits up, you've milled sugar, you've mi chopped up nuts and melted chocolate all in the same bowl. I know, isn't that cool? All right, so next we're going to um, add, I've got, it's telling me to reserve a little bit of the sugar um, to decorate it, and then I'm going to pop the rest in. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there, that's okay. Then we're going to hit next. I've done that job. Now we're going to add in some soft butter. Always a good thing. Excellent. 
And now we are going to add in the three egg yolks. Now, we all made pavlova, so I'm sure all of us have got egg yolks in our fridge. So this is one great thing that you can use them for. And you can quite comfortably double this recipe, by the way. So if you want to make a nice big batch for Christmas, that won't be a problem. So next, we are going to pop the lid on. And it wants to cook through those egg, work, uh, egg yolks. So again, um, around we go. Now a little tip for those of you that have a TM6 that you might not be aware of. With the TM6, if you slowly go to the point you want, that's fine. But you've got to remember, it's such a powerful, mighty beast. It takes you a couple of seconds to chop onions. So if you're going really slowly, it won't get up to speed by the time the onions should have been chopped. So what you can actually do, there's two things. You can aim as far as you can. I was aiming here, but it automatically <laughs> stops at that place. Oh, I've <laughs> got no idea what you're talking about, but go on. But it Keep automatically going. stops. So a lot of people will go like this until they get to the space. Oh, okay, they start going yeah. before they get there. Okay. You know? okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just one quick pass and it will just stop. However, it's a great machine. If you do it in a couple of passes, what will happen, it will think that you want control. So it will totally get rid of... Takes it off day. autopilot. Yes. And it will, it will let you be the boss and you drive it. So remember... Ooh, you I, bet no one one knew, I bet no one knew that. <laughs> Come on, be honest, guys. Anyone know that? I'm confused, you all. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Pour chocolate in there. <laughs> okay. So remember, we're cooking through those egg yolks. Um, in the chocolate. Let me just... I'm, I'm not sure whether I... Okay, insert that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm just going to come in. So we're just cooking out those egg yolks and mixing it through um, that chocolate, basically. Oh, so that's on heat now, is it? Yes, so in fact, uh, this one isn't. Oh, it's not cooking. It's mixing, it's mixing. Right. So you said cooking out the, cooking out the egg yeah. yolks. Yeah, oh, it's about three steps. Uh, Tracy so, asks, have I put my crab pots out? The answer is no, because the crabs aren't there. To, to actually check the recipe for something I'm not sure, with the Thermomix, let me have a look up here, Andrew. Yes. To shut the Thermomix, you just hit the screen anywhere. But the three little dots, whenever you see three dots, it tells you there's more stuff behind it. So it's really exciting to see three little dots. Yeah, so down, let's hit down. those. <laughs> um, and I want to go back and check this recipe. So back into the recipe. And I just want to scroll down. So we placed it, we did the chocolate. Then we um, added the um, uh, the three minutes fifty degrees speed one. Did we do that? My bowl is cold, so I think I was talking and I missed that step. Now what I can do is I can just hit that step, and it's going to take me right in there. And I'm going to go. Oh, that was melting the chocolate. That's fine. Scrape down the sides. We did that. All right. So chocolate's now melted. Remaining milk sugar, we did that, butter's gone in, and the egg yolks, and then it just mixed them together for 30 seconds. That's where we were. Okay. Oh, there's rum in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. But the three little dots, you can cancel a recipe. You can actually look at a preview as well, which will tell you what the next steps are while it's cooking, so you can get your other ingredients out. Um, so lots of good things. Right, so now it's telling us to add in rum. If you don't want alcohol, you could add a bit of orange juice or... Um, you could even put a little bit of vanilla in there, or whatever you want. What so, size is that spice rum? Uh, no, this is just ordinary rum. Ordinary rum. Um, I just got back from Dan Murphy's today. They've got their Black Friday sale on. Mm. It took about 10 minutes to find a car parking space. Oh, my God. So busy. But the deal is, deals are brilliant. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. yeah. All that money for alcohol and so many people who love a thermomix. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, so the be, fruit and nuts are going to go in. I'll be yeah. toasting those people. Tonight we haven't got a Thermomix. <laughs> um, and also the biscuits are going in. That seems like a lot of biscuits, isn't it? Mm. Alright, so I'm just going to scrape down to some of the chocolates up on the sides. Okay. Um. 
and hitting next. So the lid's gone on, it told me to do that. So all it's going to do now is to combine these for 30 seconds. <laughs> the uh, skin for the uh, salami. It's going to help me roll it. So there's no skin on it? No. It's okay. Alright, so um, whenever we're working, I always love to work with my thermomat. This, I, I, I love this thermomat. For, it's just so multifunctional. But basically, let's have a follow the instructions, can I? Okay, so now it's telling you to actually transfer it, roll it, and then it needs to go in the fridge to set. So let's have a look at what we've actually got. Yum! So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take some of this out. So was that egg yolk cooked? Yes. With the, with the residual, it doesn't need a lot to, to cook an egg yolk. But remember that chocolate was hot when it went in there. It was still nice and warm and that's what, how that was cooked through. Okay. <laughs> well, this is what Sue says. What I thought she says, uh, I've seen this recipe mentioned so often. I thought, why on earth would you put salami and chocolate together? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought, Sue. It's all right, the two of us. All right, so just getting this out. It's a fair bit of it. Can I try some of that? In a minute, in a minute. Okay. And then of course what you would do is you'd put your Thermomix on a universal wash. Now what we need to do, we just need to roll this. So I'm just going to flatten this out. Um, roll this out. So Mia says she uses a sushi mat to roll this. Good idea, Mia. Excellent. Because you need to get it nice and taut. All right, so rolling that out. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to pick up my um, plastic and I'm just going to kind of fold this on top of each other, just keeping it into a nice bit of a roll. And then what I want to do is to bring it together nice and tightly. So it's a bit like making a roulade, okay? And then I'm going to bring up this side. now. In order to create that nice tautness, all you need to do is grab the ends and then just roll. Let's do that one again. Just rolling it, and you can see it's actually tightening up nicely, much tighter. And I'm just going in at the ends as it's tightening up. And that now is ready. So we need to tie those ends off and pop that into the fridge. How long in the fridge? Um, so um, you could pop, if you wanted it quickly, you could pop it in the freezer for a couple of hours, um, but you probably want about four hours in the fridge. And it will last um, a couple of weeks in the fridge. Um, so when, so when you take it out, do you keep it in the cling wrap? Or just no, I'll show you in a second. So yeah, when you take it out, it'd be nice and cold. So you just take the cling wrap out and then you have that lovely kind of salami left. And Ross Withers just said, hey, Andrew, you've not had a taste yet. Well, he did ask. He did he ask. Does. And I was said. told in a minute. <laughs> he's doing as he's told. So I'm just, just chat to everybody, Andrew. Everybody. Where's, the bit, where, where's the bit I'm going to taste? <laughs> And answer your question, Tracy. Now we've got um, a couple of crab pots around the back of the house, and oh, you did make one earlier. So here's yeah. what I made earlier. And I didn't, so, and I didn't catch any crabs. So you can see it kind of looks a bit like salami. See, Tracy knew. She says she made one. <laughs> and um, and that's why you want those lighter colour biscuits. So what, when did you make that one? A little while back, a couple of hours ago. Um, and um, you dredge it all over in icing sugar. And then you just nicely slice it and serve it. And it's quite delicious, actually. Actually, it reminds me. Thank tell, you. Tell me what it reminds you of. It's very nice. Oh, 
I'm under pressure here, yeah, I can't think. Well, That's me for rum and raisin. <laughs> rum and raisin what? Oh, this tastes rum now. Mm. Nice. You know, well, it's, it's not overly sweet. No. It's, um... <laughs> I'd have to say it doesn't taste like chocolate. <laughs> It tastes like a sort of a, like a dessert, like, like a like a soft pastry or a, yeah. But the uh, mm. textures, I mean, that's, that'd be so good for after dinner because mm. it's not overly sweet. And it's not. I can have a few of those, like a soft biscuit. That's what it tastes like. It's very nice. Or it has a texture of a soft biscuit. And that's Andrew's. Um Taste of the... So, so Belinda asked one of those questions. If you don't want rum, what can you uh, substitute with? Oh, as I said, you could put orange juice in there. You could put... Cointreau. Whatever. Yeah, Cointreau would be awesome. Um, and if you weren't to... Some whiskey, about it, some really, comfort. And the other thing is an espresso coffee would be beautiful. A little shot of really strong coffee Not would be for me. there. Um, but, you know, you, if, you, if you had orange in there, you could put some little bits of glazed orange. That is really good. That is... Um, um, whatever. Whatever you love um, and use the base. So, what a great idea for Christmas. You know, we've still got quiet time, as I call it, before we get into the madness of Christmas. You know, make up a few, few of these. I mean, you always bring out, I mean, we always bring out like, the Cabris favourites and all those boxes of quality street, whatever. Imagine bringing that out mm, for, uh, you know, you've got the coffees being served around and... As a as a after dinner, not dessert, but you know, it's a bit of a sugar treat. Fantastic! Mm. It looks good. And um, can I have my roof tile back, please, for the roof? <laughs> it's not. This is my slate serving board. Um, and the great thing is not overly sweet and sickly, so that's a really nice thing about it. All right. So there you go. That is the uh, famous chocolate salami. Let the wonderful Thermomix and Cookie Do guide you through the process. And just remember, don't be afraid of changing up those flavours, using up what you've got, and also putting in there what you love. Fantastic. That's me for now. That's a great idea. I love Sue's comment. Thank you, Sue. She says, um, love that Andrew is there. I have to say this one. <laughs> Not being the expert you are, Colette. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> you ask the questions we're all asking ourselves. <laughs> have a little fan club there Andrew <laughs> all right everybody that's me for tonight have a beautiful evening and don't forget if you know anyone that's after a thermomix we still have that extra bold lady lid offer available until the end of the month enjoy shopping in the sale and thank you to everybody who's popped my name in as your consultant really appreciate that have a beautiful evening bye for now say bye Andrew bye bye Andrew <laughs> you have another piece of this it's so delicious always oh, nice <laughs> Um, I have to say, it's a, bit, a little bit erotic when you're wrong in this one. <laughs> oh, are we still alive? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's so naughty. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>